Is the juice loose? Let's find out. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I've got my review of Beetlejuice Beetlejuice aka Beetlejuice 2. This is the new film from Tim Burton, it's a legacy sequel 36 years after the original and I've now seen it, it's in theaters now and we're gonna talk about this thing. Before I do though, be sure to hit that like button and comment down below your thoughts on the film as well as your expectations if you have not yet seen it. Subscribe to that notification bell to help reach my goal of 150,000 subscribers here on the channel, it mean a lot. And if you want extra content from live Q&As to reaction videos and more, you can find that over on my Patreon. Any support truly does mean the world. But when it comes to Beetlejuice, the original film that came out in 1988, I feel like it's necessary for me to give you context for my experience with Beetlejuice. So I saw the movie once in 2021. I thought it was all right. I actually did a reaction on the channel. You could go scour my page for it and find it if you tried real hard. <laughs> but I watched it again in preparation for this. And honestly, my thoughts changed for the worse. I just find the movie to be Tim Burton's wackiness over anything else. It's just him saying, hey, here are a bunch of weird shots and weirdness. Just let me just throw it at you, but not really have a compelling story or have any characters that are remotely likable. And so I get why it's a cult classic in a sense, but aside from like the Tim Burton vibe it gives off, it doesn't really do much for me. It's just not my cup of tea. In fact, I've never really been a Tim Burton guy. It's rare for me to truly like one of his projects. And so I went into this movie very low expectations, you know, 36 years later, Keaton's back, eh, I don't know, the trailers didn't do much for me, to be honest, and so I go in, I watch the movie, and I'm happy to say I'm pleasantly surprised for the most part. To me, this is an improvement over the original, fully aware that's a hot take. I'm gonna emphasize that about a hundred times in this video, that this is just my opinion on Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. I never grew up with the original, and I just have to let you guys know, this is coming from the perspective of somebody who doesn't really care for the original movie. But now that we've got that out of the way, when it comes to Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, I'm gonna start with my pros. It's a movie that embraces the Halloween atmosphere. I had no clue the movie was gonna take place so close to the holiday, and a good chunk of this film takes place right on Halloween. I don't even think that's a spoiler to say. It's a Halloween movie through and through, and so watching it, you know, this the setting in the small town with the leaves falling, and you can almost feel the crisp in the air through the big screen, I was like, I'm excited for spooky season. It's starting to cool down where I live, and I'm like all in. Let's get, you know, the, the pumpkin spice out. Let's go all in on Halloween. Let's watch some horror movies. I'm ready. I am so ready, and college football's back too, which excites me, but that's, you know, side rant. I could go off about fall forever. It's my favorite season by a country mile. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice embraces the spooky season vibes. To me, it's a movie that's going to be in the rotation for a lot of people when it comes to, you know, late September, early October. It's a movie people are going to want to toss on and watch and just embrace the spooky season. And, and I can't lie, it got me excited for Halloween, much like a movie called Hubie Halloween, as well as Hocus Pocus 2. Movies that I don't find very good, but movies that excel at getting me pumped for Halloween. So cheers to Beetlejuice Beetlejuice for doing that. Um, when it comes to Keaton, Michael Keaton, he plays Beetlejuice in this film and he steps right back into this role seamlessly. I wasn't really worried about that because he's a phenomenal actor. I mean, the guy doesn't miss ever really. He's still just as zany as ever, just as over the top as ever. And he's got those weird one-liners that <laughs> some are funny and some you're just like, what? More on the humor later. And then of course, Winona Ryder returns in this film as well as Lydia Dietz. And I thought the way this movie approached her character was unique. You can only do so much in a legacy sequel. And her character is involved with a TV show that interviews people who have these paranormal encounters. And so for her to still be, you know, involved in this paranormal world with ghosts all these years later was fitting and is a way to kind of bring her back into the fold without it feeling forced. So I thought that was cleverly done. And then of course, you've got the new edition of Jenna Ortega, who's like a superstar to the younger generation, and she crushed it here. She plays Astrid Dietz, which is Lydia's daughter, and the family resemblance between those two is uncanny in this film. Clearly, they're not related in real life, obviously. But in this movie, I fully bought in to them being a mother-daughter duo. Jenna Ortega plays a Wednesday Addams-esque character in this, which makes sense. Sort of the outcast girl of school that, you know, people are like, oh, you're weird, your mom's that ghost lady, right? So she's playing that outcast character, comp to Wednesday Adams, and so I feel like she didn't have to do much for this role, which is not at all a shot of her acting. She's great, but she plays a very similar character in another Tim Burton project, so it's not like she had to do much to, 
you know, play Astrid Dietz. Catherine O'Hare is also back from the original film and she's just as funny as ever. In fact, it's impressive to me just in media in general when actors played a character decades ago and they step back into the same shoes all these years later and it's like seamless. It's just impressive to me. I imagine that it's a bit difficult um, for an actor to do that, but it's like riding a bike apparently because a lot of these people just pick right back up where they left off so, so well. I'm honestly impressed with the fact that this movie feels like it has an actual main plot. I could not believe when it comes to that original film how nothing seemed to progress. It was just, we were stuck in this constant state of meandering around to nothing. And with this movie, it feels like there's actually a sense of direction, a point to the movie. And that goes for like a main plot that you follow, but also the characters have meaningful journeys in this film. It feels like they change from beginning to end. There was a lot of character work done in this film that stood out as opposed to the original Beetlejuice to me. And you might be surprised by what I'm about to say, but the highlight of this movie to me probably was Willem Dafoe. I forgot he was in this movie. And so when he popped up on screen, I was like, hell yes. I mean, he was just comedy gold in this film. He's this goofy actor type who's obsessed with perfecting his roles, but he played like an action star. And so it almost parodies like traits of Tom Cruise in a way. I mean, his comedy, a home run. I, I was all in anytime he was in a scene, I was like, I'm about to get a good chuckle, aren't I? So while this movie's undeniably got its entertainment value, it does have its fair share of cons for me still. Maybe the most notable being the fact that there's a lot going on. There is like four or five subplots in this movie, and because of that, it can feel real messy. For starters, you've got Jenna Ortega's character, Astrid, running around town with this boy, and that's its own plotline. You've got Beetlejuice in his own little subplot, a villain character who's getting introduced that never really speaks, and we never really have a reason to feel afraid of her or connected to her. She's kind of just there, played by Monica Bellucci, if you didn't know. And then you've got Lydia dealing with a potential marriage. On top of all this, every character's grieving the loss of someone that dies early on in this film and so it's just like whoa there's a lot to digest here and the movie never really smooths out until the very end like we would cut from one group of characters to another to another and it didn't mesh together as well as i thought it would have the movie doesn't flow naturally it almost feels like there were so many ideas here and so much story to tell with all the different characters that they could have made it into like a tv miniseries like an eight episode thing but they had to condense it into like an hour 45 minute movie and because of that certain subplots do feel a bit rushed through. Some of these subplots felt like they would carry a lot more weight by the time we reach the final act. Nope, that's not the case. In fact, there's a lot of predictability with some of the twists and turns uh, associated with this film. Some reveals that you'll see coming from 100 miles away, and I do think the movie maybe thought it was smarter than it was when it comes to that, but I pinned it pretty much immediately, and I think a lot of people did as well. Let me know in the comments down below how you felt, though. And when it comes to a Beetlejuice movie, you can expect, you know, a fair share of wacky, bizarre things. This is all from the mind of Tim Burton. There's gonna be some weird shit, let's be honest. But to me, this movie failed when it came to having prolonged sequences of goofiness that just go on and on and on and on. And it's like, okay, we get the point. I, I could maybe force a laugh or two at first, but when you got a five minute scene of people dancing and, you know, mouthing the words to a song, how long can that go on? I'm aware on the one hand, it's a callback to the original film in a sense, um, but it didn't work for me there and it didn't work for me here. I just don't have that sense of humor. I find other things hilarious and other movie shows. This humor missed the mark a lot for me. Aside from Defoe's character, there was a good chunk of humor in this movie that just fell entirely flat for me. And even the audience I was with, there were outbursts of laughter in this movie, but there were also moments where you could hear crickets in the audience and it was like, oh, okay, this is just not funny. It missed the mark. It, it didn't read the room, I guess. I don't know. If you watch the first Beetlejuice, you should know what you're getting into with Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Tim Burton's wild directorial style is on full display here. Like there are some strange claymation scenes and imaginative new character deaths in like the underworld or whatever the hell they call it. It's weird. There's some weird stuff in this movie, but that's kind of par for the course with Tim Burton. You should know what you're getting into. And so, yeah, if you like the first Beetlejuice movie, you should like this movie just as much, if not more. I don't have any attachment to that first Beetlejuice. I don't even like the movie. And so to me, this is no question a better movie than the original. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, fun time at the movies. I could see myself going back to it in spooky season if I get the itch to want to watch something that takes place in fall around Halloween. It does just have a lot going on 
on. And at times you can almost feel yourself checking out. At least for me, I was like, huh, we're really headed with this. And then boom, we'd cut to this other scene. Boom, this other scene. It was a lot. It was messy. It was kind of a bumpy road. Near the end, it did try and, you know, smooth out a little bit, but... This movie was real choppy at times because of so many different subplots. I think it might have been better off if it was a six to eight episode miniseries. I feel like they could have fleshed out Monica Bellucci's character, done more with the mother-daughter relationship than they did, and dive into a relationship Jenna Ortega has with the character in this film 10 times more and made it more impactful because so much of this movie did feel meaningless by the end and like it didn't have as much weight as it should have. But yeah, by the time the credits rolled, I was like, that was a fun watch. It was a harmless fun watch, like a three to three and a half out of five for me. For the most part, enjoyed my time, far from perfect movie, nowhere near Tim Burton's best movie, but I would recommend watching this if you're a fan of Beetlejuice or if you just wanna go to the theater this fall and get in that spooky season mood, why not? But those are just my honest thoughts on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Let me know yours in the comments down below and be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and that notification bell to help reach my goal of 150,000 subscribers here on the channel. But thank you guys as always for watching and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.